Yes. Um, I was interested in what Rebecca said there about Facebook recognising the particular vulnerability of female public figures. Um, I want to really concentrate my questions on, on Twitter this afternoon, Katie. Does Twitter recognise the particular vulnerability of female public figures? Yes, absolutely. Um, Sorry, go on. Because we've heard evidence that female MPs come in for more abuse on Twitter than male MPs. Are you aware of that? Yes. And were you aware of the Amnesty International research that was carried out in 2017, which found that, um, in particular, Diane Abbott was the most abused female MP in the United Kingdom, and contributing, contributing to that was not just misogyny, but also racism. And I should declare it my interest that I was in the top five of, of, of the other four that were the most abused female MPs in the United Kingdom. So you recognise that there's a particular problem with abuse of female MPs. Um, you'll be aware that in terms of the Equality Act, sex is a, is a protected characteristic and that discrimination on the grounds of sex is unlawful. Yes. Can I ask you why Twitter's hateful uh, conduct policy does not include sex as a protected characteristic? So the, our hateful conduct policy does include gender and gender identity as a protected characteristic? Yes, but in terms of the Equality Act, Section 11, sex is a protected characteristic. Why does your hateful conduct policy not protect women on the grounds of their sex? That's the question I'm asking, because in British law, and I hesitate to use the phrase because I'm a Scots lawyer, but this is the law across the United Kingdom that it's unlawful to discriminate against people on the grounds of their sex. And I'm puzzled as to why Twitter doesn't include sex as a protected characteristic. And when we come to look at the very unpleasant videos I'm about to show and the very unpleasant tweets I'm about to show, you will perhaps understand my concern that sex is not included as a protected characteristic by Twitter when it is in law a protected characteristic in the United Kingdom. Um, but I just wondered, can you tell us why Twitter have chosen to exclude sex from their hateful conduct policy as a protected characteristic when it is in law a protected characteristic? I just wonder if you could give us an indication of the thinking behind that. Our hateful conduct policy is based on UN definitions um, and it would include, you know, you couldn't um, target someone who was female um, with abuse based on the fact that they are a woman, that would be against our rules. Right, so are you saying that the inclusion of, of gender should be enough to protect women from discrimination uh, by Twitter in the way that they apply their policy? Um, uh, as I said, there's, there's a lot that um, we want to do to reduce the burden on reporters. We have rules in place where it would be um, a breach to target someone based upon the fact that they're a woman. Where we need to do far more is mm -hmm. to be proactive in reducing the burden on victims to report okay. that to but, us. But clearly Twitter is operating across the globe and in the United Kingdom sex is a protected characteristic. Are you able to tell us why Twitter have taken this specific decision to exclude sex as a protected characteristic? And if not, could you perhaps follow up with a letter explaining the thinking behind that? Uh, yes, I'm happy to follow up with a letter. Right, OK. Now, I'm afraid I'm going to show two rather un unpleasant films attached to tweets now. And um, before I do that, I just want to make something absolutely crystal clear. Uh, these uh, tweets uh, use the word TERF, which stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist, and they relate to the very active debate in social media about trans rights. And I want to be clear that there is considerable ab abuse on both sides of the argument and that I deplore any abuse directed at trans people. But in my questions today, because the evidence has shown that female MPs get the most uh, abuse on Twitter, I want to concentrate on what Twitter is doing to protect women from misogyny on Twitter. Now, the first video I'm going to show is attached to... Um, uh, was tweeted out by a Twitter account known as Sonic Fox and was ruled by Twitter not to be abusive or offensive initially. I believe it was taken down eventually. It was initially ruled not to be abusive. 
and it's called What I Do to Turfs, and to warn people, I think it's a video game or a cartoon of a man repeatedly chopping a woman in the neck, and I wonder if we could just look at it. I think we need to do the sound as well. So this, this, was, this was tweeted out, attached to a tweet saying, what I do to turfs. Are, 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 we, are you aware of the controversy about this tweet? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and if you look, there's a couple of packs you should have in front of you. There's pack A and pack B. If you go to pack A and go to page four, You'll see a tweet from, from a woman. I'm not going to read out her name because I'd be afraid if I read out her name she might come in for further abuse. <coughs> but this woman has tweeted a further tweet from Sonic Fox who has retweeted what Twitter has said that they received a complaint regarding his account for that film and they have investigated it and said that it, they couldn't identify any violations of Twitter or applicable, applicable law, and therefore the tweet would not be deleted. Now, knowing that there's a debate about trans rights, knowing that some people on one side of the debate are called TERFs and that they tend to be women, do you not agree with me that that tweet was offensive on the grounds of sex or perhaps even gender? Uh, yes, and that tweet was in violation of our policy and has since been removed. And we have uh, contacted the reporter to inform them that we made a mistake. When was it removed? Um, I believe it was last night. Yeah. Was it removed because I had tweeted about it, Caroline Priado Perez had tweeted about it, the well-known feminist, and Helen Lewis, the associate editor of the New Statesman. Is that why it was removed? Because an MP, a leading feminist and a leading journalist had tweeted about it. Yeah, I, I've been um, in touch with um, Helen and Caroline, over email over the past few days, they, they did make us aware of this issue. And did, were you aware that I had tweeted about it yesterday, that I'd be raising it today? I saw your tweet yesterday, yeah. yes. So if a Member of Parliament, a leading feminist, a well-respected commentator and a leading journalist had not tweeted about this, do you think Sonic Fox's tweet would have remained up? Um, I think that's an absolutely undesirable situation. We, I am due to meet with Helen and Caroline in a couple of weeks um, and... Um, I'm aware that they've, um, they have a number of issues they'd like to discuss with us, and so we absolutely want to get to a place where um, the situation you outline does not happen. I wonder if we could look at the second film, because the second film was sent to Helen Lewis when she raised concerns online about the first film. And we, I warn people that it's very unpleasant representation of a man flaying a woman alive. I, I could barely bear to watch it myself, so I'm just warning those watching here and on television that they may find it very distressing. to the tweet containing that film? I'm not familiar with this specific tweet. Do you, do you know if it was taken down? I don't know if it was taken down. Do you think it should have been taken down? Uh, yes, I'm, I, um, I don't work in our safety team. I'm not the expert. I would think that absolutely violates our hateful conduct policy. You see, what I'm trying to understand is why initially the first tweet, the chopping in the neck, was ruled all right by Twitter and why it took the intervention of a leading journalist, a leading feminist commentator and a member of parliament for it to be ruled not all right. And I think in order to understand the answer to that question, we need to understand who is actually carrying out these decisions. Who, who's carrying out the mediation at Twitter? Is it done in the United Kingdom? Is it done in America? Where is it done? Who is it done by? Is there any attempt at gender balance within the teams of people looking at these tweets? Um, let me talk you through our, um, our training and how it, it works. So there's three things. The first is how do we develop these policies? Um, 
we develop our rules in concerts with a trust and safety council of organisations from across the world that have been in place for almost three years. Um, they review our policy ideas, they give us recommendations, they give us feedback. Uh, that process has now been extended to public consultation, where appropriate, we ran a public consultation for the first time towards the end of last year on a new policy around dehumanisation. Um, when we have our policies, the second bit of this is when we onboard um, our um, content moderation team uh, so that they're able to, to make uh, decisions on content they review. Um, here, this includes um, training on the experience of members of protected categories um, and uh, the um, cultural biases they may see on the platform and the issues offline that these um, that vulnerable groups experience. Well, you didn't training yeah. on discrimination against people on the grounds of sex, because you see you haven't included sex as one of your protected characteristics. I'm wondering if that could be what's going wrong here, that the training is not covering the fact that sexist, misogynistic, demeaning behaviour should be treated as seriously as abuse of, for example, trans people. Um, as gender and gender identity is included as a protected characteristic, I, and my understanding is that it is absolutely included in the training, but I'm very happy to write to you afterwards with the details of that. And can I pursue with you whether there's any attempt at gender balance in the teams of people who carry out the mediation? Um, again, I, I don't have the details, but I'm very happy to, to write to you after this. I wonder if we could look at another tweet that was sent to Helen Lewis of the New Statesman, and it's in uh, bundle pack A, and it's page two of, of, of pack A. And um, um, Helen has tweeted, update, this tweet is officially not abusive. Thanks, Twitter. I will try to view it, quotes, in the context of a larger conversation, close quotes, whatever the hell that means. And the tweet is, is, is a cartoon depiction of somebody making the V sign, not V for victory, the other one, and holding up a gun and pointing it <coughs> outwards. And it says, and forgive my language, shut the fuck up, turf. But you will see that actually, although it's a cartoon, the part of the cartoon that is a hand holding a gun is actually taken from a photograph. So it's a real hand holding a real gun. Do you agree with me that that adds to the sinister nature of this? The fact that it's a real hand holding a real gun? Yes, absolutely. Um, and this uh, account, the account that shared this uh, photo, has now been suspended. Yes, but initially, as Helen will tell you when she comes to meet with you, Twitter said this was not abusive and that she should, quotes, try to view it in the context of a larger conversation. Do you accept that decision was wrong? Uh, yes, we've, we've um, contacted Helen, the reporter, and said we made a mistake. I mean, there seem to be a number of mistakes here, and they seem to be mistakes that are failing to protect women. Do you accept that? Um, I mean, you mentioned the amnesty report. I don't think anyone can read the amnesty report and not be horrified by the experience of women in public life. Um, that they shared to Amnesty. Um, there is it's clearly a number of um, steps that we want to take, we need to take, um, but we are in a different place to where we were mm. even this time last year. You know, thinking about the Amnesty report, um, there's a number of recommendations we still need to move on, but there's already three that, that we've changed that I can... But, but my point is there seems to be a pattern of Twitter initially ruling the extremely offensive, violent tweets directed at women in public life are acceptable and that Twitter only reviews their decision when they are pressed by other figures in public life, such as myself and Helen and Karen and Criado Perez. Do you not know think there's something wrong there? We, we are um, very much aware of the real issue that women experience on our platform. You know, it, a few months ago, a colleague of mine from the Trust and Safety Team met with women's charities here in London because we are reviewing our policy on harassment and there is an issue specific to women on um, uh, typically ex-partners stalking them on, a, on Twitter in ways that um, have traditionally been... Um, difficult to detect in our rules and we want to do better on that so yes we are acutely aware of the unique experience women have on Twitter and changes we may have to make in our policies to get that right. 
I mean, do you accept that the term turf is, is a gendered term in the same way that, forgive me, bitch and cunt are gendered terms? Uh, yes. And are bitch and cunt acceptable on Twitter? Um, there are, as Rebecca said, that we don't have a prohibition on swearing, but there are a number of um, rules that, you know, it would be a violation to target someone with that kind of language. So if somebody sent me a tweet saying, shut the fuck up, cunt, would that be acceptable or would it be taken down? Um, as I said, I have uh, colleagues who work in the safety team um, that would be able to advise on the specific uh, nature of a tweet, and I'm very happy to follow up with you in writing on but that. Can, but can you not answer that question? If someone sent a Member of Parliament a tweet such as this, with the gun and everything, saying, shut the fuck up, cunt... Would that be considered acceptable? Yeah. As I said, this tweet um, was taken down. It broke the rules. And so in that scenario, I would assume yeah. the same. Okay, good. Now, I just want to quickly look at PAC B, because would you agree with me that members of parliament, and indeed women generally, and indeed, of course, men, ought to be able to discuss facts, evidence, and debates in parliament online without being shut down? Yes. Well, let's just look at PAC B. And again, I'm not going to name, read out the name of the person who tweeted to protect them from any problems they might experience. But you will see there that one person has tweeted that Twitter suspended a woman for quoting members of parliament. Hashtag Twitter is sexist. And the person who's been suspended says, when I was tweeting threads about the Gender Recognition Act of 2003 2004, I got locked out of my account mid thread. This happened twice. Now, why would Twitter lock somebody out of their account for tweeting about what was said in Parliament during a debate on the Gender, Gender Recognition Act in 2003 2004? Why would it do that? Um, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not familiar with this specific right. instance, so I wouldn't be able to comment on why. Right. Would, would you be able to investigate for us and tell why? Because Tell us why in a, in a letter, because you'll see as I go through this, there's a pattern emerging here. Can we move on to, to page four? And um, there's a woman here, and again, I, I'm not going to say uh, what her name is to protect her identity, but this t tweet is from November last year, and she said... I was suspended from, twi from Twitter, I was suspended for saying we need to talk about male violence. And her tweet is addressed to a couple of other Twitter accounts, including Labour Left. And it says, we need to start talking about male violence. Males kill trans women, males kill women, males kill men, males kill children. Most killers are male, vastly, hugely, disproportionately. Very, very few killers are female. Let's take action together to hashtag stop male violence. Now you can take it from me as, as somebody who worked as a lawyer for years that it is a fact that men kill more often than women, vastly more so. So if we assume that this woman was stating a fact, why would she be suspended from Twitter for stating a fact about male violence? Um, as I said, this is, um, it, it would be my colleagues in the safety team who made this decision and I'm happy to follow up in writing about okay. the nature of that. Well, if you could turn over the page and look at page five, there's a, a, an account here, again, I'm not going to read out its name, but it says, Twitter is giving out seven-day bans for quoting UK law on rape. This is outrageous censorship. And what the person uh, has said is, all rapists are men. In UK law, rape is a crime only committed by a person with a penis. And then this has been said to be violating rules against hateful conduct. Now, if that's a statement of fact, why would Twitter suspend somebody for saying it? Um, I mean, again, I think a, a broader theme that is emerging from um, these examples is that um, this is where working with um, safety organisations uh, work of co the committee like yourself in, in trying to think about how we can appropriately moderate a public discussion on um, an issue like um, transgender rights mm. uh, is, is, is difficult and it's, it's where we need to partner with people who are expert in the matter. That specific tweet, again, I, you know, I, th it would, I would go to my colleagues who would be able to provide the context as to why that decision was there's made. No, there's no attack on trans people in this tweet, mm -hmm. which I 
emphasise that if there were an attack on trans people, then I would condemn the tweet. But there's no attack on trans people. The tweet says, all rapists are men. In mm -hmm. UK law, rape is a crime only committed by a person with a penis. So I don't understand. That doesn't seem to me to violate any rules against trans discrimination, mm -hmm. which I has, which I, add, which I add, I would I would condemn. And then if just look at the last page there, page seven. Again, I'm not going to say the name of, of the account, but this account was this account uh, was determined to have violated the Twitter rules against hateful conduct by saying the following. Over 80% of violent crime and 99% of sexual assaults are committed by males. You won't find many women being kind when men try to take away what few safeguards they have. Sorry, Philip, but we'll be kind when men stop raping and killing us. Now, why does that violate against the rules against hateful conduct? And um, it's a bit of a generalisation. I can yeah. see why some, I, you know, if I was a man, I would be a bit cross because I would think, well, not all men rape. But, I mean, Twitter is a bit of a limited medium for communication, but there's, there's factual statistics there, and I just wonder why this seems to be immediately taken down when things like shut the fuck up turf with a gun are only taken down after protests are made. Yeah, no, I mean, um, absolutely. I think uh, clearly there's um, an issue here for us to look at cases like this um, are incredibly valuable in pointing out what the, the limitations of our rules and I'm very happy to follow up with you in writing on these specific tweets. So can we be quite clear for the record then that despite the fact that Twitter have excluded from protected characteristics sex, Twitter believe that women should be protected from hateful and misogynistic conduct on Twitter? Yeah, as I said, gender and gender identity are within our hateful conduct policy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sally. Thanks. Um, this is for Rebecca, and I'm not a QC, so <laughs> maybe you can relax one degree. Um, Sorry. You've, <laughs> uh, you've already, I think, mentioned the um, community stand, Facebook's community standards, um, and quoting from them, um, obviously not, not completely, but you say, in determining whether a threat is credible, we may also consider additional information such as a targeted person's public visibility and vulnerability. And I think you've mentioned MPs coming within the public visibility category. And I appreciate that what I'm saying, what we're all saying, could be applied beyond uh, the community of the cohort of MPs, but this is specifically about MPs and, and democracy. And then go on to say, uh, it goes on to say, we remove content, disable accounts, and work 